top billing in Strasbourg went to Jean-Claude Juncker and his first ever State of the Union address. The migrant crisis that has exploded over this summer was at the heart of his message. But did this message have any substance? We ask Dutch MEP Esther de Long from the European People's Party and Belgian Green MEP Philip Lamberts their opinion. Was the speech delivered by Jean-Claude Juncker really a State of the Union? He showed uh, direction, he was specific enough. I could agree with most of what he said, not exactly all, but uh, uh, most of what he said. So I think that, uh, well, he was the, a, a very uh, appropriate face for Europe uh, in the current circumstances. My first reaction is finally. Uh, finally, somebody standing up to trying to find solutions uh, for problems that we're facing at the moment, serious problems, and uh, it's not enough to just finger point to other member states. We need a common European solution here, and finally there's somebody proposing it. The Commission President announced plans to redistribute 160,000 migrants across EU countries. Is that the way forward? Well, it was 40,000 before the summer and uh, the 160,000 in total shows you what happens if you don't act quickly. I wish that member states would have actually uh, managed to agree among themselves when the first proposal was put on the table. Would that have stopped the influx of refugees? No, but we would have had a more quicker procedure in place. So um, it's time to act. The numbers will only uh, grow bigger. The chaos will become bigger uh, because because we're not treating uh, these people, we're just piling them up if we don't do anything. And this is the last thing that we want. Well, of course, I agree with it, uh, but there's much more in what he said. Uh, he basically put an end to the Dublin system as we know it, that make the, 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 ex well, the countries that are at the external borders of the Union in charge of everything, basically. He said that we need a permanent uh, relocation and binding relocation key. So it's not just about 160,000. Mind you, there's 4 million Syrian refugees and Germany alone expects 800,000 this year. So, I mean, 160,000, that's nice and that's going to be difficult enough. But I expect that there will be many more uh, uh, refugees than that. And finally, he spoke very clearly about the need for having a legal entryway in Europe. And basically, that's the best way to kill the business of uh, the smugglers. Was there enough in his speech on social policy? He did speak about social policy when he mentioned two explicit things. One, that he would come up with a legislative proposal establishing basic social standards across Europe, which would be a revolution. And second, saying that basically workers, uh, when they work in a given country, regardless of them being nationals or foreigners, uh, have to be treated the same way. And that's also questioning basically the uh, uh, posted workers directive. So on these two points, now I expect him to deliver. Well, he was bold in his commitments. I want to see. Action. It's good that he said, OK, don't count the number of words, but judge me on my deeds. And the fact that he says, OK, uh, having a job is a matter of dignity. That's a matter of the social dimension of Europe as well. I know the Commission is going to come up with, with proposals, improving mobility, making sure that our young people uh, can profit as much as possible from not only their own labour market, but possibly other European labour markets as well. So I know the social is in his heart. I'm not judging him on the number of uh, times he mentions it. Um, the speech was full and wide, and this is what I wanted, and this is what he delivered. At one point, Mr Juncker seemed to talk directly to the UK, so that come referendum time, the UK votes yes to the EU. What do you think? Well, that might be some British sensitivity there, maybe. From a non-Brit, I can't judge on whether uh, that was a, a hidden message to the Brits or not. But I know that this is an issue uh, close to his heart, close to our heart. I mean, me speaking as a Dutch politician, I would rather have the UK on board than not on board. On the other hand, we can't have a Europe where e everyone just picks and chooses. Well, I think there that they are prepared that they may, might be preparing a sort of, uh, well, mini sellout of Europe uh, uh, to the UK. Well, there's two things, two avenues that they are using for that. One is the Better Regulation Project, which Juncker mentioned, and this is basically a project of deregulation. There's no mystery about that. You just read the papers and you understand what it is. And this, that is this TTIP negotiation. Those two things are basically the two things that uh, Juncker would like to offer to Cameron to basically buy his yes. Is Mr. Juncker the right man to speak about climate change? 
Noblesse oblige. I think uh, Europe has to play uh, a leading role when it comes to climate issues and of course it's difficult because we know that uh, uh, the CO2 emissions from Europe uh, uh, are, are small <laughs> compared to India, to China. Is that an excuse not to do anything? No. Uh, we should play a leading role and convince others to join us. Now, again, he was bold but quite general in his uh, statement. Again, we will see uh, what kind of positions that the European Union is going to defend. But when, when I look at the attitude of Cagnete, who is in charge, basically he says, well, forget about uh, uh, putting the focus on reducing our emissions. Try uh, to put the focus on, on basically uh, uh, preparing for uh, the, uh, the impact. Uh, I mean, if that is the direction, I think that, again, the European Union is backpedaling on its former commitment. Seems to be